Game Chat with Buana, your source for gaming news and reviews. Now, here's Buana McCall. This is Game Chat with episode 40. Not episode 39 that you saw down there at the bottom. It's episode 40, actually. Game Chat Born. Every Monday night we do this stuff. Do you guys know we did the first Game Chat with Buona in November of last year? So we're over a year old. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. To you. Hey, thanks for sticking with us for a whole year, guys. We've been doing this for 40 episodes, and we did it for about a year. And uh, this started out as a little bit, a little bit of an experiment. I went back, watched my videos. Like, what is Game Chat with Buona? That's the title of it. I was like, I just want to talk about gaming news with you guys. I want it to be kind of interactive and things, and you guys participate and submit things, and we talk about those things here at Game Chat One. So that's how it's going to go. If this is your first time here. Welcome to the live stream at twitch.tv slash Buona and live.buona.tv. We do this every Monday night at 6 o'clock p.m. Eastern Time. Tonight we're a little bit late. My bad. <laughs> We're a little bit late tonight, but uh, it's about 6.30 something, 8, 6.38 tonight. We do this every Monday night around this time thereabouts. And what we do here at Game Chat 1 is that we talk about the latest gaming news. That's seven days of gaming stuff that we discuss here. We try to find the best shows that are on the, well, not the best shows, but the best stories across the entire interweb. And um, we don't find them all. So that's where you guys come in. You go to our forums over at buona.tv slash forums and you post stories that I may have missed. And you post your favorite stories. And then towards the end of the show, we go over your stories after I've already gone over mine. And then after that, we have title time. That's when you guys come up with witty titles for the show based on the stories that we covered. And uh, we have a lot of fun with that. And the winner gets accolades and bragging rights. And we will honor him for a whole week with absolutely nothing but praise and adulation. But this is Game Chat Boy episode 40. Without further ado, we're going to get on... And for our first story, we're going to talk about Bastion. 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 <coughs> we're going to talk about Bastion. And Bastion is a great game, independent game that was on Xbox 360 or Xbox Live Arcade and also on PC. I first got this game just a couple weeks ago. It was on, um, actually last week, it was on sale on Steam for five buckaroonies and uh, picked it up. And it is actually very, very good. You can check out my Let's Play on my YouTube channel. I did about an hour and 45 minutes of gameplay for you guys. Um, and uh, I was very, very impressed with what I saw. But it's going to get its first DLC next week for a whopping zero dollars. Woo! -hoo. That's right in my price range right there, boy. I could get, I could pay zero dollars, zero dollars. That's yeah, yeah. I can afford that. But if you're an Xbox Live Arcade, I hope you got points. If you ain't got no points, then you're gonna have to cough up a dollar, one dollar, one dollar bill. This is gonna be the new DLC, the Stranger's Dream DLC, and the Stranger is the narrator, um, and he is awesome. I, I really, I can't express how the narrator makes this game. Um, without the narrator, Bastion would have been average to good. With the narrator, it it, it just it just puts it over that level. I mean, it's, 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 a, it's got so much character, so much personality. And uh, I really think you guys, if you haven't checked out Bastion, we're going to talk about another story that you may be interested in. But uh, the, the DLC is coming next week. Uh, I don't think they have an exact day. Um, I don't 
don't see an exact date. Oh, okay, there we go. December 14th. So that is actually... This week... Wait a minute. Wait a minute. We got we got back the car can on PC this week. Ah, what am I gonna do? Bastion DLC calleth back the car can car calleth on too many games. Check it out, guys. It's over on joystick.com. We got the details about the new DLC for Bastion. Now the next story. If you don't have Bastion, if you haven't played it or you haven't downloaded the demo. You can try it out right in your browser. If you got Google Pro, bleh, Google Prone, I'm gonna prone and Google. Battlefield 3 is on my mind and Bastion is on my mind, so I said Google Prone. It is not funny. Play Bastion in your Google Chrome browser right now. There's actually a downloadable version within the browser that you can play right now. Follow the links in this show description, this show notes right here, this joystick.com link, and you can play Bastion in your browser right now because it is available right now. Now, the original price is $15. I bought it on sale for $5, so I'm really happy with that. But I can really say that this is worth the price of $15. So you guys can try it right now. If you go to this link and click the install link, you can be playing right now while you're watching Game Chat with Warner right now. Check it out, guys. This is over on joystick.com. I've installed it. Haven't played it, but I'll show you what it looks like. If you click on new tab here, you get a big, pretty Bastion icon right there. You just click on that guy and boom, shebang, ba bow. You can play Bastion right within your browser right now. Now, for our next story right now, I couldn't believe this. How can someone... It, it's, it seems almost physically impossible to hate Mario. I can understand you're getting tired of Mario. You're, you're Mario'd out. Mario'd out. You're, you don't want to see any more new Mario games. But how can you, like, how can you not like Mario? It, and now when I saw this headline that the Rayman creator doesn't like Mario... I got a little bit suspicious. I'm like, what you talking about, Rayman creator? Rayman looks like a very, very game, a very, very good game. Rayman, um, and he's behind Be Beyond Good and Evil too. The newest Rayman looks really fun. But I looked at the quote. The quote actually makes sense when you read it. He says, as far as I'm concerned, not at all. I will tell you something terrible. I don't really enjoy playing Mario games. I don't, here we go, here we go. I don't like gliding. I don't like its inertia. I don't like not being able to give slaps. You see what he did there? He's promoting Rayman by saying he doesn't like Mario. Because I can't slap in Mario, but I can slap. Where can I slap? No, it's not a slap chop. It's Rayman. <laughs> it's a fabulous series, and I understand that people love it, but it's not my cup of tea. Well, I'll give you props. Rayman's a great game, but how can you not like Mario? Check it out, guys. This is over on escapismagazine.com. They got the details over there. Rayman creator doesn't like it. It's a me. It's a me. Game Chat with Juana is recorded live before a worldwide audience every Monday night. You can participate by suggesting news stories. Just register an account in our forums at buana.tv slash forums. Okay, let's talk about some numbers in the form of dollars, dollaris, dollar bills, and um... Modern Warfare 3, you can't really talk about breathtaking sales without bringing up Call of Duty because everybody buys it, except you, right? You guys didn't buy it, but everybody else, everybody who doesn't watch Game Chat would want to bought this game. Modern Warfare 3 makes $1 billion in 16 days.
According to Bobby Kotick, engagement of our Call of Duty audience continues to rise around the world. Call of Duty as an entertainment franchise has made an indelible mark on popular culture and its broad and continued success is further validation that audiences increasingly value interactive experiences over passive experiences. Call of Duty has become that rare entertainment franchise that transcends its own genre. Core gamers love it as our stellar reviews show. But every year, new people are drawn into that game called Call, Call of Duty. Of Duty. Duty. That was also Eric Hirschberg, the CEO of Activision Publishing. And, and while, while the, franchise the franchise continues, continues to set to records, 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 our fans, fans seem, seem, seem to want more. more. Demonstrated, Demonstrated by our record-setting record start, start on Call of Duty Elite, 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 we are committed we are to helping everyone connect, connect compete, compete, and improve, improve their game, game, Call of Duty style. style. One billion dollars in 16 days. One billion dollars. That's absolutely outstanding. Um, much as we love to hate Call of Duty. Guilty. It's so much fun hating Call of Duty. It is a fun game in a Call of Duty way. Cliche. Trademark. Um, but it is uh, definitely a feat for anything. I mean, they beat out James Cameron Avatar, the movie. It's, it's, it's an amazing feat to make a billion dollars in 16 days over entertainment. So check the story out, guys. This is over on GamePolitics.com. It's also all over the web as well. <laughs> they got the details over there. Now, from the department of the what department? When you think about Game of the Year, you think about titles like Skyrim, possibly Portal 2, you know, Uncharted 3 comes to mind a little bit. Um, Battlefield 3 for a lot of us. But in Germany, that ain't the case. That is not the case. Crisis 2, according to this German publication, is their game of the year. It received a total of six best accolades during the video game award ceremony held in Dusseldorf. Dusseldorf yesterday evening making it the country's favorite title of 2011 best action game best graphics best soundtrack best technology best console game and best German game the studio's founder Abney Yearly was overjoyed it's an incredible honor for us to receive this huge recognition tonight we are absolutely proud of what we achieved with Crisis 2, but this all would not have been possible with such an amazingly talented and hardworking team. We want to thank everyone at Crytek for their efforts and for making this game possible. I was a little bit surprised, I gotta tell you. I have not played Crisis 2. I did see the single player campaign stream many, many times. I saw a lot of footage and it looked very fun. Um, single player. Multiplayer looked average. It, nothing stood out from multiplayer that says, hey, Buona, you've got to buy me right now. And I still haven't bought this game. I, it was on my wish list for a long time because I wanted to play through the campaign because it did look fun. Um, and it was, a, it was gorgeous. It was a beautiful game. Um, but as far as game of the year, it didn't even, it didn't even cross my radar uh, for game of the year. I, th this was the last game I would even conceivably bring up for game of the year. Now, if I had a category like best graphics, which I think we do. Uh, we're going to have our end of the year uh, voting coming up real shortly. So check me out on Twitter. Watch my Twitter. We're going to be posting the vote links and all that stuff. Maybe for best graphics. Um, but game of the year, I don't know. So check it out, guys. This is over on PS3Vault.com. They got the details. Very strange story, but uh, I guess in Germany, they really, 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 really love Crisis 2. Now, as far as that Game of the Year nominee, according to the Video Game Awards the other night, Skyrim won Game of the Year for 2011. And, uh, you know, this, this title is getting a lot of positive press, even though, you know, we picked that last week for Dragons going backwards in life because they took a patch to the knee. Um, 
Skyrim is getting a lot of awards and expected to receive a lot more awards. Um, but uh, some players, Xbox 360 players, uh, obviously couldn't wait for Connect support to come officially. So they have modded, <laughs> modded it so that the Connect will work with Skyrim. Um, and this mod features motion controls he's shown off in previous videos, along with a voice no, additional voice controls, meaning that you can actually shout to shout. Yes, the voice controls go even further, enable the player to switch weapons and access favorites. Uh, there's also some voice commands not featured in the video, including hello to start a conversation, blah, 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 blah. But yes, shouting. Like you'll be playing the game and then your mom walks in the room, hon, what do you want for dinner? Ah! Okay. I will come back. Now you don't have to get mean with your mother all that. Okay. We'll discuss this. I'll just come back later. Skyrim modded for Connect so that you can shout the shout. Because, you know, inside the game, they actually have shouts. Got a little carried away with that one. I'll admit that. A little bit, little bit much on that. Well, check it out, guys. This is over on joystick.com. They got the details over there. Skyrim modded for Connect so that you can shout when you shout when you shout and get your shout on. Now, 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 the juicy one. Yes, all the Half-Life fans around the world are just a little bit giddy right now because there's a new ARG. ARG! These are a series of puzzles and riddles and technological hurdles to give you clues as to what's going on. They did a lot of this for Portal. Very, very fun activities that Valve does. But apparently, uh, they prepared, let me tell you how this started. The character Wheatley in the Portal 2, uh, Portal 2 game, he got nominated for Best Voice Actor. And they put together a canned acceptance speech. Uh, it's up on YouTube, it's linked here. And uh, within this acceptance speech, there are a lot of clues. That whenever Valve released something, people, they just don't look at it at face value. They just don't look at it at face value. They go, ah... Uh, um, he sneezed. Therefore, that word sneeze starts with an S, and S is a squiggly line, which means a snake, and snake is the, the, the source of House of Slytherin, and that, Gabe went on record to say that he saw the, the movie featuring Slytherin three times, so that means it's Half-Life 3. Um... There's some cool stuff in here, though. They got some, uh, there's a series of Cyrillic symbols. Um, they were translated to mean observation satellite lanthanium. Lanthanium is the periodic element in group three. Now, this keeps going. Translated to Greek, lanthanium reads, I don't know. note the lambda symbol, a gaming icon that screams half-life. Numerous constellations can be drawn in the stars behind Wheatley, all forming lambda symbols subliminal stuff everywhere. Wheatley finishes his speech by attempting to give coordinates of his location in space. He only has time to say 111 before being cut off. 1 plus 1 plus 1 equals 3. Must be Half-Life 3! The atomic number of lanthanium is 57. 5 and 7 are just starting in any dates in July for the next year's E3. 5 plus 7 is 12. 6, 5, 12. The 6, 7, 12. Makes perfect sense, right? Right. Images of what appears to be a headcrab can be captured within the video's final second. Looks like a headcrab to you, right? I clearly see a headcrab there, right? Right. Must be awesome, right? Must be Half-Life 3, right? Right. But this update is just going to add more to it, right? Right. Here's what Doug Ratman, <laughs> the, the en en enigmatic source behind Valve Cryptic's arc, this is what he says. He says, connection dead. Signal too weak, attempting to relocate, stop. ETA, men, 60 days, max, unknown. So, yeah. That's where we get the title, Half-Life 3, possibly coming. 
or reveal coming in 60 days. Did you get all that? No? Let's go through it again, okay? Let's do it. Let's start from the top. A series of Cyrillic symbols can be seen above named Wheatley. Translated reads... No, I'm not going to do all that. Check it out, guys. This is over on Vivid... 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 It's over on VividGamer.com. They got the details about Half-Life 3 reveal coming possibly in 60 days. Please support Game Chat with Buana by turning off your ad-blocking software. All right, guys, for our next story, very sad news coming from the camp of GSC. If you are familiar with the Stalker series, if you're familiar with the Stalker series, you know about GSC. Um, they are, stu are the studio behind the entire Stalker series. Stalker um, is a great uh, apocalyptic shooter, if you will. Very similar to Half-Life. I'm not Half-Life, to Fallout, I got Half-Life on the brain. Very similar to Fallout in a lot of different areas. They're not exactly the same, though. Fans of Stalker are fans of Stalker. Um, and it's really sad to see that the, the actual studio is going to close. Um, there's a lot of information going back and forth behind GSC. They're closing. They're not closing. And uh, here's what uh, the final statement was. They said GSC... Is close. A fact confirmed by all. The team is almost completely dissolved. The state has only a few people. This guy, Galinkin, Sergey Galinkin, blames the cost of developing a PC only shooter for a European audience and a failed console publishing deal for the collapse of the developer. So that brings up an interesting point. You know, I'm sad to see the studio. I'm sad, I, I get sad when I see any studio closing. Um, but it brings up a good point. A lot of these studios have to go console in order to survive. Um, you know, we, we always talk about PC gaming and how we, we really look for PC gaming, game PC only game titles. And PC gaming is much bigger in Europe than it is in the United States. It's, it's ginormous over there. The United States is a primarily a console based uh, market. Uh, PC gaming really thrives over in Europe. So apparently, these guys really suffered um, in terms of costs. And uh, I don't know the details, I don't know the exact numbers, but it brings up an interesting point. Do PC game developers striving to, to market towards a European audience, do they have to go console in order to survive? Um, it is, you know, it's, it's, it's very... It's bittersweet because you want them, you want them to survive, but you don't want them. You don't want. I mean, part of me didn't want Starker to go to console. I mean, that's a PC game. Um, but when you look at the reality, when you look at the numbers, when you look at the cost, when you look at the, you know, companies got to stay alive. You know, we might have to put our biases aside and say, hey, these guys got to go consoles. They got to go to consoles. We look at Crytek. They went consoles and they paid off big. They won Game of the Year in Germany with Crisis. Um, and just about every major game developer now has some sort of a tie to a console. Look at Notch with Minecraft. He didn't even he didn't have to go to consoles, and he's already got an Xbox 360 deal. Um, Going to be very interesting to see how many more studios stay open that have the same type of business model that this one does. Or whether they're going to actually go towards a, a console market aggressively. It's going to be very interesting to see, guys. Very sad. Can't really make a joke out of this one. This is all sad news. GSC has closed. No more stalker coming from this particular camp. Maybe the guys over uh, behind Metro 2033 will pick it up. Uh, lots of stalker 3 sc screenshots were released. And it looked really good. And it was very, very... Very, very sad to see it go. So check it out, guys. This is over on Rock, Paper, Shotgun. They got the details. You've, uh, yeah. Now, let's talk about the free-to-play MMO market. 
and we talk about it just about every week we bring up free to play titles how free to play titles are are thriving they're making a lot of money uh we we always look at league of legends as the poster child for the uh for the western culture uh, a lot of korean titles had uh a lot of success with free to play model early on uh, a few years ago so this article over at wappworks.com has released a new study that was uh published by newzu and it's very interesting they have this graph called the life cycle of gaming, basically, um, or the life cycle of something. What is it called? The product life cycle. Introduction, growth, maturity, and decline. So basically, you got a hill. Apparently, the free-to-play MMO has reached this stage here. They're at the peak. They're at the maturity level, meaning that the audiences primarily are late adopters. Uh, the market is large. You know, it's flattening in terms of sales. Uh, competition is high. I can't agree with, I mean, I can't disagree with that. Competition is very high now. Customer retention is the business focus, and design focus is support. Uh, can you guys disagree with any of those points? I mean, a lot of people are playing League of Legends, and they're not necessarily late adopters. These are guys that, you know, that generally don't play a lot of games, and they're playing League of Legends. It's, it's beyond that mainstream market now. It's going towards the late adopters. Um, and they got some other points in here that the free-to-play market in terms of growth, uh, let's say in 2011, Americans spent 24% more on free-to-play MMO games than in 2010. 20% more. Totaling $1.2 billion or 47% of all MMO spending. Half of MMO spending went to free-to-play. That's that says a lot in itself. Um, there's a lot of competition. FIFA Online, League of Legends, World of Tanks, Age of Conan, Lord of the Ring Online, Star Trek Online is coming out. DC Universe Online just went free to play. Uh, Lineage, I think we talked about Lineage 2 went free to play. EverQuest 2 is now free to play on Steam. Um, lots and lots of competition. So this article brings up a great point. I gotta agree that it is starting to smell like that maturing market in this particular graph here that a lot of games are going free to play and that market is starting to taper off. Now what's going to happen when it starts declining? I don't know. The next big thing may be coming. I mean, we haven't encountered it yet. Maybe we have because I consider myself an early adopter. I like to jump on games as soon as they hit. Um, maybe maybe that new thing is already here and we don't know about it yet. So check it out, guys. This is over on WAPWorks.com. They got the details you know, over there. Now, speaking of free to play battlefield play for free has introduced some new customization options in the form of weapon customizations I actually played a little bit to that a little bit of this today you guys may have seen my YouTube video I did a clip on it uh, where I was running around with the shotgun and the uh, 870 shotgun is still kind of overpowered there I mean I joined the server and went like 20 five and an eight or something like that with a shotgun running around battlefield rusty as ever but still went 25 and eight with a shotgun sniping people with it it was kind of funny uh but they have implemented some weapon customizations that means that you can customize the weapons add different features to them different types of ammo uh, muzzles and scopes and uh things like that to the weapon kind of giving it a little bit closer to the real battlefield now the downside the downside is that Battlefield generally has a pay-to-win model. I gotta admit, guys, it's it's a pay-to-win model. You buy a, mo a majority of the guns are buy only, and uh, it really breaks the game. If you go and play for a while, you'll see it. Somebody will somebody will have that overpowered gun, and they would just take you out, and you can't earn it. You have to buy it. So um, hopefully, I, I'm hoping that they eventually add all guns to be earned. I mean, to me, that would be ideal. That's that's the good free-to-play model. I don't like this free-to-play model, this pay-to-win model. Um, but I still go in there from time to time. I'm probably going to play a little bit more tonight just to play some of the old Battlefield 2 maps. They do have Carcan on there. They do have Gulf of Oman, Striker Peninsula, uh, lots of good maps. They have Wake Island. I think they do have Wake Island on there. Um, very fun game, but it's got that pay-to-win thing going on. So just another uh, free-to-play title here. That's actually not doing so bad. So check it out, guys. Over on joystick.com, they got the details. Weapon customizations are coming. 
coming are already here on Battlefield Play for free. Now, speaking of awesome, Mobile Suit Gundam Online was announced. Go check out this trailer, guys, over on this page on DualShockers.com. Let me just read this. Just read this. Mobile Suit Gundam Online. PC exclusive MMO. No release window has been shared. The game will feature online arenas somewhat similar to the ones we see in MMOs like World of Tanks, but will involve mobile suits from the first glorious Mobile Suit Gundam series. Players will be able to take control of mobile suits of both factions involved in the conflict and will meet several well-known NPC from the series on the battlefield. <laughs> While the graphics aren't exactly next generation, the number of combatants involved in a single battle is rather impressive. Each side will accommodate up to 52 players <laughs> for a total of 104. <laughs> 104 players. The official website is already open, and the publisher look is looking for 3,000 alpha testers for a preliminary phase that will happen between December the 16th and December the 18th. Check out the trailer for gameplay. Lots of beautiful beautiful screenshots of this upcoming MMO. It sounds delicious, glorious. If I can get my hands on this, I will play it until the keyboard runs out of the house. Die, 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 die. Sorry, keyboard. It was Mobile Suit Gundam Online. It had to happen. Check it out, guys. This is over on DualShockers.com. They got the details for that. And that concludes all of our stories. That was kind of loud. That concludes all of our stories for tonight. We're going to move on to our user submitted stories that you guys have submitted here to Game Chat with Buana on this. Game Chat with Buana is recorded live before a worldwide audience every Monday night. You can participate by suggesting news stories. Just register an account in our forums at buana.tv slash forums. Alrighty, this is over on our forums. Head over to our forums at Borna.tv slash forums. Join the day. We got a great community of gamers who talk about gaming stuff and otherwise and some other things and some what and whatnot. Uh, <laughs> this is where I post my links where you guys can see what we're going to talk about. And also, you can submit your stories as these people have done over here on Right Channel Right Down. We got about, uh, we got a good amount of stories to talk about here. First up is Guy19900. And uh, his first story is, says, it says this. Turns out you can't sue Microsoft either. And I'm assuming this is saying either because, ooh, that picture. Um, the thing that EA did, yeah. EA had something in their, in their uh, terms of service that said you couldn't sue them. Uh, actually, it was Sony. Then EA did it. And apparently, Microsoft and his Xbox 360 are in on the act. As part of the new dashboard update rolling out, uh, the date on this article is the 7th, uh, which is, it already rolled out, the console comes with a new terms of service agreement that users, users must agree to. But in this section, 18.1.4, it reads as follows. If you live in the United States, you and Microsoft agree that if you and Microsoft do not resolve any dispute by informal negotiation under that section above, any effort to, to resolve the dispute will be conducted exclusively by binding arbitration in accordance to... I am not reading all of that. What this means is that if something happens to Xbox Live or to Xbox 360 in general, you can't sue Microsoft. Nor can you join in, in a cl class action lawsuit targeting... Microsoft. So, Sony, EA, Microsoft, who's next? Um, that's not good. 
Not good at all. Okay, there's some updates to this story, apparently. American readers are letting us know that in several states, it doesn't matter whether these kind of agreements are even legal or up for debate. Illinois, for example, has ruled that consumers must always be given the right to pursue legal action, while Ohio and New Mexico are currently investigating. Microsoft tells you, you in fact cannot opt out of this agreement and must sign on the dotted line in order to use Xbox Live. Uh, the terminology in the term of service used to opt out applies only to future changes made after this agreement. They say not to this agreement itself. So, yeah. We'll be watching this one very closely. Not good that Microsoft wants to prevent U.S. customers from suing if they mess up. That's kind of a shady, shady thing to put in there. Thanks for the story, Guy19,900. Appreciate it. Playing war games won't lead to real world prosecution, says the Red Cross. What? These Kotaku stories hurt my face. Red Cross won't go after you for playing war games. Who said they were going to? In real life, armed forces are subject to the laws of armed conflict. Video games simulating the experience of armed forces therefore have the potential to raise awareness of the rules that the forces must comply with whenever they engage in armed conflict. This is one of the things that interests... What? I don't, I don't get, get it. it. So apparently there must have been something that said that the Red Cross was going to sue you for playing war games and turns out they're not. Thanks for the story. Guy 19,900. That's good to know. So ROMs, <laughs> Generals to Details Leak, Command and Conquer. This was announced, or the trailer came out at the Video Game Awards. Command and Conquer Generals 2, First Details. Apparently this game, those of you who don't know, is going to be made by Bioware using Frostbite 2. And it's an RTS. While your brain is wrapping around all that, let's read this story. Uh, Command and Conquer's Generals 2. It's going to be done by Bioware. Uh, bah, 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 bah. They got screenshots. They got the footage here. Looks like a FAQ that's going on. How does Generals 2 differ from what fans remember of the first one? Does it still involve the traditional RTS mechanics of base building and army management? One of our main goals... Oh, this is going to be a long-winded answer when he starts out with goals. Oh boy. The players of general is up to them to create and take control of these huge massive armies. What's definitely bringing some new elements to the table as well but it's important blah 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 blah. <sighs> Didn't even answer the question. Oh this interview. This is a bunch of corporate speak. What, what does building the game using Frostbite 2 allow you in gameplay terms? Frostbite is an incredibly powerful piece of technology. We didn't ask you how powerful it was. You're going to be able to raise the bar. Uh, anyway. Sorry, Sir Roms, that That's filled with blah. But Karanicon General's 2 details leaked. Can't really peruse that. It's too much to translate. Okay. The VGA winners are announced. This is a laughing list. Are you ready to laugh? The game of the year, Skyrim. Yay. Studio of the Year, Bethesda. Huh? Character of the Year, The Joker. Yay. Best Xbox 360 game, Arkham City. Huh? Best PS3 game, Uncharted 3, Drake's Deception. Yay. Best Wii game, Zelda Skyward Sword. Best PC game, Portal 2. Huh? Best handheld mobile game, Super Mario 3D Land. What? Best shooter, Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3. 
Huh? Best action adventure game, Batman Arkham City. What? Best RPG, Skyrim. Ah. Best multiplayer, Portal 2. What? what? Best individual sports game, Fight Night Champion. Best team sports game, NBA 2K12. Best driving game, Forza Motorsport 4. Where's Gran Turismo? Best fighting game, Mortal Kombat. Most motion game, read the list. Lots of games there. Thank you, Saroms. <laughs> Minecraft Pocket Edition won't replace desktop, but will bring survival features soon. Minecraft for the Android and iOS will see significant updates. Let's see. The plan now is to start digging into making Minecraft Pocket Edition with survival, something that it really needs. This will not replicate Minecraft and try to bring all the features that are already out. It's not possible and does not match the touch the platform. So what they're going to add is a new file system, a new item system. You'll be able to pick up items. Crafting will be added. Inventory system will be added. Mobs and enemies. Optimizing the rendering code and cleanup of code overall. So this is great news that the mobile version of Minecraft is going to see some significant updates. So thanks a lot for that. See my half. Great story. And for Nicholas Fun Stuff, 2011 gamers played 2011 gamers played Modern Warfare 3 the most, Skyrim the longest. And I think this is according to Raptor. Yes, Raptor is a client that tracks your games that you play and how long you play them. Apparently Modern Warfare 3 was the most and Skyrim, uh, I'm sorry, Modern Warfare 3 had the most players and Skyrim had the most amount of time. And that's kind of crazy because Skyrim just came out like a, not even a month ago, right? Wow, so you guys are pumping a lot of hours into that. But there's a lot of good things on there. So thanks for that, Nicholas. Fun stuff. All right, DICE posts a list of possible future battle Battlefield 3 changes. And we're not going to go through all these. I've seen this list. Um, big list of changes. <laughs> so go ahead and read this. Sorry, guys, I'm skimming through these pretty fast. Um, speculation about The Last of Us. This is from Raz Yemi. And this is the PlayStation exclusive. Great looking game here. I have not seen this yet. I have not seen this trailer. I'm going to have to watch this. But it's going to be made by uh, Naughty Dog, the guys behind Uncharted 3. And... Um, he kind of looks like Nathan Drakeish, and he's got a female counterpart as well. Um, but this game does look pretty decent. They got a lot to live up to with Uncharted 3. So definitely check out the trailer of The Last of Us. The Video Game Awards had a lot of different trailers there. Fortnite announced this is going to be another title inspired by Minecraft. Um, this was another one. Epic is going to do some freeform construction stuff. This also has a debut trailer that you guys should watch. So a lot of things that came out were all debut trailers. Skyrim E and B series mod. So I can't watch the video in here right now, but uh, apparently the same person who did the Deus Ex Human Revolution mod. I think we talked about it on here um, where he did a mod for the first Deus Ex. And he gave it like a single play or um, a knife stab. I think that's what it was. Excuse me. But apparently this is going to improve. Now Skyrim is one of those games that you don't really need to improve the visuals. But these look pretty good. Um, these seem to be the majority of Skyrim mods that are out right now. The ones that are improving the graphics. Or uh, I saw a... Um, cell shading one that was in development. I'm really interested in seeing a cell shaded version of Skyrim just to see what it looks like. It looks really good though. So this is the EMB series mod for uh, Skyrim on PC. Version 1 is out now. Thanks for that Emron deal. Mesmerizing, bleh, mesmerizing Revelation Guild Wars 2 Mesmer is the final class. Mesmer! I remember her. She was in the first Guild War, right? The reason they announced that the eighth and final profession of Guild Wars 2 was anything but the Mesmer, there would have been worldwide riots. 
Fortunately, such is not the case as the studio confirmed in a brief tweet that the Mesmer would be the last addition to the class roster. So, uh, <laughs> if the Mesmer wasn't the final class, I would have been scared to see the reactions because that is a very, very, very popular class. I know I, I like to play the Mesmer in the first one. Um, I, I, I'm trying to remember if that was the name of it the first one. Mesmer or something. Uh, we'll see. But, uh, thanks for that. Emerald. Yep. Next story about Technifin. Empire Earth Gold Edition free on GOG.com until December 14th. So you got a couple days. You got a couple days. Empire Earth Gold Edition. Go over to GOG.com on this link here. GOG.com. Free copy of the game ends on 1059 GMT on the 14th of December. Also, a lot of different holiday sales. SimCity 2000, uh, Crimson's Locomotion, Serious Sam, Earthworm Jim 1 and 2, so on and so forth. So, free games! Right, right. Okay, Fish Twit, Mark Hamill, Tara Strong, uh, both not happy about the VGAs. <laughs> Mark Hamill says, weird VGAs, don't mind losing, but I'd like to know when it happens. Did I miss something? Award given off camera? Tara and I in lousy seats? Boo! Wow. So Tara Strong, who played Harley Quinn, and Mark Hamill, obviously, who plays the Joker, uh, they were kind of upset at what happened at the VGA Awards. Um, he had lousy seats, and he even knew that the category had been announced about voice acting male. And he did this whole spiel with the Joker for them. So I'd be kind of upset, too. Okay, occurred, according to the correction, the Best Voice Acting Female Award was presented during the pre-show. The Male Award was only in a montage. Huh. Wow. So they didn't even mention the nomination. And they had them sitting in the bleacher section. <laughs> wow. That's pretty messed up for two strong talents in the industry. Um, very, very bad. But like I said, the VGAs are kind of a joke anyway. So, Dead Mouse loses his PlayStation Vita, or he lost it. How did he get a Vita? DJ trolls the PlayStation faithful. Last night we posted a story detailing. A series of tweets from Dead Mouse indicating that he lost his PlayStation Vita demo unit. He has tweeted saying it was all a joke and that he still has his unit. He posted a picture of the device on Facebook, but could not, couldn't that be an old photo? Is this all damage control? Pro probably not as people saw him playing the Vita on Ustream today, but let us know that. Blah, 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 blah. So, practical joke. Um... Dead Mouse said he lost his Vita and he didn't. So I guess he was trying to make a play on what Apple did with the iPhones and they lost theirs. So, okay, he trolled everybody. Whoop! And we got some more spoilers below. MVP wins WCG's SC2 2011. So, I am MVP wins WCG 2011. Uh, he won $20,000. Wow. Big money. I didn't I didn't catch this tournament, but it's good to know that um it actually happened. WCG was getting some bad press. I think at one of their finals that was a no-show. It might I think it was WCG that had a finals that was a no-show and they forfeited and people won prize money because the other team didn't show up. It was kind of kind of bad how it was handled. Um, 
But MVP now increases its overall earnings to $251,950, being the first player in StarCraft II history to break the $250,000 mark. He's playing a video game. He's got a quarter of a million dollars in earnings playing a video game. Makes you think twice about that profession, huh? Makes you think twice about going to college and getting that education, huh? Makes you, nah, guys, go to school, stay in school. You can play StarCraft in school, but go to class. Thanks for that, Soapy. And Skyrim's Bacon Borm for the win. What is this? Oh. What? The deuce is that. He bought all this bacon. He constructed it out of aluminum foil. And then he cooked it. In the microwave? In the oven. And then he put it on his head and screamed. I am the bacon born? And that includes all the stories that we have tonight. Guess what it's time for? It's title time, guys. Title time. Guess what time it is? Title time. Title time. Title time. Title time. Title time. I'm just going to skip right ahead to that. This is the time where you guys come up with snazzy titles. Titles for the show. Things that make you go, hmm. Titles to deal with the stories. Stuff that we got here. Let's do it. Start reading them. Title. I'm a wilder right now. Why can't I slap in Mario? I don't like it. Back to Rayman. Bacon Born stole the show. McModern Warfare 3, over 1 billion served. Bastion DLC, but I'm going back to Carcan. Tim Peepo pulls in another? We didn't talk about that. They call him Bacon Born. Crisis 2 is number one in Deutschland. Happy 40th birthday. I'm going to fill the fort tonight. I see what you did there. Have it your way in Battlefield 3. I say foos ruda and blew down my TV. I'd buy Bastion for a dollar. Play Battlefield, pay the win while your wallet has a crisis. Zero dollars, a kid can afford that. Half-Life 3 beta, minimum 60 days max, three years. What's all the fuss ruda over Skyrim? I see what you did there. Best multiplayer game, Portal 2. What? Be Portal 2, best multiplayer. Tea leaves, say Half-Life 3. MMOs mature as fast as FPSs. You know Sue Microsoft, trollface.png. Google Chrome, making things free right now. Boots Ruda, Half-Life 3 is going to come out, but it will be a t-shirt. The VGAs took an arrow to the knee. One billion crises involving free-to-play. World chat with Guana. Welder chat. I'm a welder. Creator's gonna hate. What? The last game from Naughty Dog. The Elder Scrolls V Bacon Dirt. Game of the Year. The Never Ending Bastion Story. Dead Mouse has a crisis after he loses his PS Vita. Nope. Chuck Testa. Chrome is a bastion for gamers. Battle ew. Battlefield Crisis leads to Portal 2 multiplayer. Rayman Creator doesn't like mushrooms in his tea. Help. Someone call the police. 333. Three, three, all three to half. Life 3. Mark Hamill shown the brought the brought yeah. Mark Hamill should have brought the bacon. 
No EA stories? That's impossible. No like Mario? Shame! Get a Half-Life 3. Crisis 2, game near in Germany. Meanwhile, in U.S., Bacon. Bacon born, the next Lady Gaga. Microsoft says, no lawsuit for you. Call of Duty, Modern Warrant 3. Cod, Cod shouts one billion secrets about Half-Life 3. VGAs invoke the wrath of Hamo himself. Okay. Woo! We gotta pick three contenders. Let's see here. Let's pick some contenders here. Some contenders. Let's see here. We got one here. Side. And I can't. Alright, let's just get one. Um, any, mini, mini, six. Take a tiger and give him a fix. If he hollers, then yell something. <laughs> I just had it. Where'd it go? There it is. Jeez. Forever. Okay. I got three today. Three titles. Here's one. Here's two. And here's three. Alright guys, you know the routine, type in the number that you want to use, go ahead and do it, let's go! stuff Nicholas fun stuff you win title time game chat one episode 40 because here at game chat one we don't give presents right? we don't give presents accolades stuff like that 
we give you bragging rights. You can go tell your folks and people, hey, I'm Nicholas Fun Stuff, and I have won Game Chat one at a time, time. And then you can say, Mama, I want you to get me all kinds of stuff so I can go to school and be a welder. Because if I can go to school and be a welder, I can get more accolades like this and win Game Chat wonder why I'm over there welding because I'm a welder. And Nicholas Fun Stuff can look at his mama, she can look back at him, they can hug and squeeze. Have a good time. She can make a pie. His daddy walk in and be like, boy, you good? I'd be like, yeah, I'm a welder. It'd be all kinds of fun here at Game Chat with Warner. We do it every Monday night, title time after every show. Nicholas Fun Stuff, you are the winner. You are a welder. You are a man. Congratulations, Nick. <laughs> and that concludes. Did it again. I did it again. That concludes episode 40 of Game Chat with Bonus. Going to be titled, titled Bastion DLC. But I'm going back to Karkan. Karkland. Kirklade. Kirkland. Back to Karkan. Congratulations, Nick, once more. We're here at live.bornet.tv and at twitch.tv slash bornet. We do this every Monday night. Game chat with one about 6 p.m. Eastern. And uh, I want to thank everybody for coming by. Everybody for sharing uh, this moment with us. Take your time off of your Monday nights. Some of you are just getting off work. Some of you have been off work a while. Some of you are just finished finals. And I appreciate you spending the time with us over here. Follow me on Twitter. Twitter.com slash bornet. Or at twitter.com slash born alive if you want to be notified when I go live here on the stream. We stream games here. And we have a lot of fun doing it. I, I play a lot of different types of games. You guys will, if you come by our stream, you'll see all kinds of good stuff. Not just Minecraft, not just shooters. You know, we do a lot of good variety of different kinds of things. Um, so thank you for coming by here. Also, I'd like you all to join our forums. Go over to born.tv slash forums. This is our community forum where everybody posts all the good stuff they find on the web about the games and you know, we talk about Minecraft. Right now, there's a nice thread going on about a communi new community project on our Minecraft servers. The guys are all coordinating their efforts using our forum. So go over to born.tv slash forums. You can join up and uh, communicate and participate with our community. This is Game Chat episode 40. I want to thank everybody for coming by again. And uh, I will see you all next week, same time, same place, at here at twitch.tv slash born at live.buona.tv. 6 p.m. Eastern. I will be on time. I will be on time. I will be on time. This is Game Chat, boy. Everybody have a great night. Take care.